hello everyone this is margarita welcome to my channel or welcome back i am going to be showing you how i'm going to create this mixed media art journal it is an accordion style and i am going to be breaking this up into two parts so this first part is going to include all the supplies and the making of the covers and the accordion on the inside and then part two will be adding all of the elements onto the each of the pages. So I start off with all of my supplies. I have a variety of papers, some notebook paper, copy paper, book pages, uh, some graph paper. I have some stencils. I've got some uh, pho photography book pages that I had in my stash, um, some various tools. And here you'll see these two um, well-loved brushes. I've had these since high school and they're really good for adding texture. A silicone brush that is also well loved. I will probably need to replace that pretty soon. This alcohol ink blower, an old toothbrush for spritzing. Uh, some palette knives, one of which breaks during the video. <laughs> A variety of acrylic paints, some metallic rub-on um, colors, and these chalk colors by Pebbles. They're super old from 2003. And then I have some chalks from Jane Davenport as well. I love how they look like makeup and all the bright colors. So pretty. These two Vicky Wooten texture paste. One of them is dried up. I was really, really sad about that. But I do try to get the most out of them. Some cardboard. A bunch of different Distress Oxide sprays. Mostly greens and pinks. A white gesso. It comes from this gigantic jar that I got on Amazon. Some sea salt to use with the sprays paper towels for cleanup, and some water. I also have a rag and then a spray bottle with just water inside of it. I start out by wetting my page. I think this is a uh, Bristol paper. And then I'm going to add a spritz of one of the uh, Distress Oxide sprays. I forgot what that's called for a second. And then some salts because the salt gives a really nice effect to watercolors and water soluble uh, pigments like these sprays and then i move that around a little bit just to get the water touching the areas that have salt so that they react and blending you know and um, creating these really nice blended colors and then i set that aside to dry and so the first stage for me is just creating a bunch of mixed media papers that i'm going to use in my backgrounds for my art journal now I'm grabbing some of the acrylic paints that I have and I'm going to spread this with my palette knife. I like using the palette knife with acrylic paints because I don't lose any paint. When you use paint brushes, a lot of the paint gets stuck in the bristles or ends up in the water when you clean your brush. But with a palette knife and the silicone brush, it you know all of your paint stays on your paper. Now I'm going to grab a stencil and my first texture paste. The yellow paste is pretty much dry. So I use the pink one, which is almost dry too. And then I'm just going to spread that onto the stencil to get nice uh, texture onto my page over the blue. Now I don't want it to be shaped like a square, so I'm trying to stay towards the center and not go towards the to the edges, you know, so I, when I remove my stencil, it's not shaped in a square, you know. Um, and then I try to add a few more areas where there's uh, some of this pink texture paste also. I really love this color. And I'm not going to be using the page completely. I'm going to be cutting parts of it. So here I bring in a little plastic baggie to put my stencil in. I do this when I'm not going to be able to wash my stencil right away because um, I don't want it to dry up. I don't want the, the texture paste to dry up on there. And then so I spritz a little bit of water in the plastic pouch and I put it to the side so that it stays moist and then when I'm ready to wash it I literally just pour some water in there and some soap and I smush it around and all of the paint or texture paste comes right off. So here I'm still trying to use the yellow paste even though it's mostly dry. Um, you know just trying to get the most out of it and I've got to press really hard because it's just not spreading like at all. Um, and yeah I forget that my palette knife is plastic and then it ends up snapping off on me. The lesson here is just to make sure you use your texture paste before it dries up. Now I'm gonna add some gesso, some white gesso to this piece of cardboard. 
and I just wanted to have like the look of texture um, you know I wanted to have some grit in case I want to spray something on it and if um, you're not aware gesso basically adds a layer of non porous surface did that make sense no gesso makes your surface non porous so if I were to spray paint on that cardboard or on plain paper it's gonna soak right into it but the gesso creates a layer over the pores of the of the surface so that your paint or liquids or whatever you're putting on it is not going to get soaked right into it it's going to sit on top um, now i'm putting some gesso on this rainforest like photograph paper i decided to go with the clear because i want some of the images to show through and my clear gesso i think is also starting to dry out uh, it's so frustrating when that happens because you have all these supplies that you really love using, but you know, you don't get to use them as often as you want. And then by the time you come to use them up, they're, they've gone bad, you know? And I, yeah, that makes me sad. So I gotta make sure I start using all of my supplies. So I'm gonna spread this nice and evenly all over this page, a uh, nice thin layer. I don't want it to be too thick. And then I set that aside to dry as well. Now I bring out another stencil. I have another texture paste also drying up um, and then yes yeah, so I'm having a hard time spreading it on here and I'm trying to add some of this uh, this stencil has four different shapes on it so I'm just using the circles and then I try to use it on multiple places on my paper I'm just trying to be careful because my obviously the, the paste I just put down is not dry yet so I don't want to ruin it completely and then I'll continue doing that until I feel like there's enough area on there with some uh, texture and, you know, with that uh, nice uh, stencil pattern. And that's what that looks like. And I'll set that aside to dry as well. I'll just keep kind of going through this process of adding things, moving into the side. For the next page, I grab a different color of acrylic paint. I think I layered, yeah, this is two of them. So I'm going to use some green and some blue. Now these two colors sit next to each other on the color wheel, so they're not going to turn brown. They're going to blend well when I spread them around the paper. And for this, I use my fan brush. It is dry. I didn't wet my brush before putting it on the page um, because I, I don't want it to have like a super smooth appearance. I want it to look jagged and um, yeah, I want it to have those uh, strokes from the brush. And now I'm grabbing another acrylic paint color and another I have this like a dark gray and then this gold and I'm okay with it spreading onto the pages underneath because I'm going to be adding color to pretty much all of these papers so it's perfectly okay for them to overlap like that if anything I would I would welcome that appearance that look and so yeah so the gold has some sheen there I don't know if you could see it because it was uh, kind of blurry Moving on to the next one, I'm going to use some sprays on this paper. Now this piece of paper that I'm spraying on has not been gessoed, so it's not going to be easy to spread that color on once I've sprayed it. Um, I do spritz it a little bit just to kind of, I don't know, get it moving a little bit, but for the most part, where you spray it, that's where it's going to stay. And because I had enough wetness on it, I grabbed another piece of paper and smushed it on top so that now I have the same colors on more than one page. I do try to wipe the nozzle. Um, I don't always remember, but uh, I try to do that so I prevent any clogging. And again, I wet the, the pink and it didn't move around too much. You can see still where I sprayed it. And I'm gonna spray some more colors. Here's a green, such a pretty green. And then again, add a little spritz of water and um, do I smush it on? Oh, here I'm dripping it onto the next page. I noticed when I use a bunch of different papers for this process to create um, different backgrounds, they seem to kind of have a same, they seem to have the same theme, probably because I'm using the same colors and same supplies. But, um, you know, it's really good to do that if you want it to have, say, a journal that has the same look throughout, and then you can use all the same papers that you created 
together with the same colors and paints and things like that so that you give them sort of theme you know now I'm going to cut out my cover using this cardboard and I'm measuring it with an insert for a, a traveler's notebook so it's a traveler's notebook insert and then I'm just going to cut that out with a blade and a ruler of course anytime you use a blade to cut you want to be really careful and this piece that I'm cutting from has a fold in it and so obviously I don't want my my journal cover to be floppy so I do add some support to that and you'll see exactly what I do to uh, fix that in a little bit and of course I pass my blade on multiple times with slow and, and gentle pressure and each stroke that you you pass your blade onto the paper is gonna is gonna cut a little bit deeper um, in this way because if you use too much pressure at first what happens is if you make a mistake and you go off your line that misalignment is going to be really hard if not impossible to fix and then your edge is just going to be crooked but if you put a little bit of pressure and you pass that blade nice and slow like i'm doing now pressing just a little bit more each time you go you're gonna get a much better cut that's straight and even and i don't even cut all the way through as you can see i lift it so that then i can cut that last little layer of cardboard and of course I'm never looking for perfection that's not my thing but you know I want it to at least be the shape that I plan to have <laughs> now I cut a piece of twine and that twine is going to be used as the closure for my journal using my glue gun the twine is going to go right over that line of glue and then a piece of cardboard or cardstock is going to go right over that And that's going to keep that fold from bending. Now I'm grabbing these pages that I put gesso on. It's just a pattern paper that I never really use. And these are going to be the pages for my journal. And of course I'm measuring with my eyes how wide the paper should be. And I start my folds. It's going to be accordion style. So I'm going to fold one side over and then the other side back. And I'm going to be attaching these pages together uh, with the sewing machine. I'm just going to sew them together. So here's my next flap for my accordion. And I do burnish that in place with a bone folder. But I'm going to run to my sewing machine and sew these two pages together. And now I have a longer piece and we'll continue with the folding process. Now what I like about making journals like this is that you can use any supplies you have. You can make it any shape that you want. It can be as long as you want or as short as you want, like meaning you can have as many accordion folds as you know you would like to have. So this could have easily be become a really, really big accordion. But I only use a few sheets that I had and um, these accordion type of journals are nice because they're also double-sided so you can decorate both sides and you know you open up your journal on one side and then once you get to the end you can flip it the whole thing over and then you have more pages to work on on the other side so now i have my two pieces of cardboard i've got my folio um, my accordion folio on the inside and I'm going to start gluing down my cover. So I chose this scrapbook paper with the wooden hearts on it. And I'm using my glue gun to get this down. I'm just going to cut the excess off of the bottom. And I'm just going to fold that over and then glue the other side as well. And now I'm just going to cut off all that extra paper. And now I'm going to do the back cover. And I'm just going to use the same paper with the same pattern. It's just going to be facing a different way. And then I was going to cut off the excess, but then I decided to use those little flaps to continue covering the cover. Continue covering the cover. 
Um, yeah, rather than cut them off, I just fold them over. I feel like when a while goes by that I don't make videos or do voiceovers, I completely forget how to do this. So please excuse me if at some point in this video or this voiceover I don't make any sense because a lot of times I make sense in my head, but then when the words come out of my mouth, they don't make the same sense. <laughs> So bear with me, please. I'm grabbing this other piece of paper to cover the rest of that cardboard. And now I have my two covers and my string that's gonna go wrapped around to close it up. I'm just trying to figure out where my front is, where my back is. I did take them to my sewing machine and added some stitching along the edges all around. And I love how that looks. And I really want those hearts to be in the front, but my string should have been on the other side um either way i still want that to be the front and so i'm just gonna make it work because you know we create for ourselves and I'm, i've settled it i've decided <laughs> those are the two inside pieces and now i'm gonna glue my insert and here i want to get this as straight as possible i do end up messing up and having to rip it off and do it again because you know, that's just how things are. And now I'm putting the top cover, excuse my head. I wanna make sure it's nice and straight. And that's now the inside cover. And it's put together. So fun. And I have my string, which is gonna wrap around. And I'm gonna be putting a button closure there to wrap the string around. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys in the next one.